Sure. My name is Marvin Nguyen. I am the writer of The Edge. So you can find me on Kickstarter uh, at The Edge Comic, on Instagram at, at The Edge Comic, and on Twitter at Marvin Nguyen because someone has at The Edge Comic on Twitter and they've never posted. Uh, the Kickstarter will end on June 7th, I think it was one, and it's right after Three Wars Comic Con. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of Rapid Fire is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes for the interview itself. And we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? Our first guest today is a very talented comic creator and writer. He is the creator of the comic The Edge, which I just happened upon recently. Love the art style, love the the cast of characters. But we're joined today by the ever talented Marvin Wynn. How are you doing today, Marvin? Good. How are you, Kurt? Doing good, doing good. Let's jump right into it here. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking, tell us who you are and what you're all about. Sure, my name is Marvin Wynn. I am the writer of The Edge and coming straight out of Comicsburg, so there's the shirt. <laughs> That's what we call our collective here in Pittsburgh, the, the Comicsburg crew. So I started in comics pretty much reading back in the late 70s, early 80s, like G.I. Joe, like Avengers, uh, Justice League. And then I found the X-Men, and then I found Jim Lee's X-Men. And once Image started, I think that lit a fire in me to want to be able to create comics. Before that, it was just Marvel, DC, Marvel, DC, Marvel, DC. And then Image came along. And that was a big boom and a big thing that they kind of said to me, hey, maybe you should try this and see what happens. And Pittsburgh is a very creative city as well, too, but especially when it comes to comics. I mean, there I've had many people on the show that have come from Pittsburgh. They're incredible. Right. I mean, that's one of the things that we formed Comicsburg for was to light that Beacon in the night saying that Pittsburgh is a creative town. Also, it's not just a sports town or a technology town or a former steel town. There's a lot of art. There's a lot of music. There's a lot of play. There's a lot of things going on in Pittsburgh that people should be aware of. What is your creative kryptonite? Time. Uh, working a day job and doing comics is probably not something that's always going to afford you that time to do things because since we've been working remotely, you spend a lot more time working than you do doing other things. So your weekends become your de facto get work and comics done. But then that's also the weekend where you need to be able to do those chores you won't be able to do on the week when you were working all day. What is the second wisest piece of advice that has stuck with you in your creative career? Uh, that would be my grandfather. When I was younger, we would hear words that we didn't know. And he would immediately put the dictionary in our hands and tell us to find out what it meant and to learn it. He was very good on making sure that we kept ourselves educated. Put a lot of books in my hands from the time I was six years old. Uh, I read Dracula when I was six. I read Malcolm X's biography when I was six. And then uh, he kept putting a dictionary so many times in my hand, I decided to read the dictionary and just make it easier. It's a good thing because it's always changing. You're always discovering new words, new phrases, things like that. So I mean, it's a living thing. So it's always keep your, your head above the clouds and try to learn as much as you can. How do you think the birth of creativity was formed? As we read in books, we have, we have Prometheus and fire. The human condition is always to want to know something like, how does this work? How does that work? How do we put a spark in something? You've had storytellers throughout history. Before there was written word, people were telling stories around campfires or they were telling stories in the night. That comes from is the human ingenuity is to want to learn and then share that with others. And sometimes that comes in a form of um, fiction and creativity. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Well, we once again, we're going to go back to what I said about my granddad. <laughs> when <laughs> when I'm, we're just with my cousins and we're like repeating things that we heard in movies or animation. And, and they're like, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. And granddad's listening. He's like, okay, come here. So we got to go in the, in the room with granddad and he would pull out the dictionary and say, look it up. I want you, and then, and then he wants to write it down and then write it in sentences and tell and bring it back to him in a day and tell it. And for us to explain in our own words, what this word means. How about professionally in terms of language having power? 
Uh, I would say any of the authors or writers I've fallen. Stephen King is just one of them, and the way that he crafts stories from his imagination. And like we can we can all go back and look and, and try to figure out what the source of these things are. But I mean, it's it's just a wealth of knowledge coming from a person. You're just reading those pages, and it's sometimes it jump it's jumping off the page at you, and you're just in this world with him. And that, that's what I look at when I look at the written word is. How does it affect a person and how does it transport them to the, the world to the author's uh, crafting? So then looking at the themes of, of your comics that you've created here currently, what is an important theme that you think is needed in comics today? Perseverance, that when you get knocked down, you get back up, you get knocked down again, you just keep getting up because that's the battle. Everyone can just get knocked down, just lay there and that's it. But getting up and continue to fight, even though you're down to your last little bar of health, like if it was an RPG, you've got that little heart left and you still want to try to defeat that that box. And looking at the fact that you have a Kickstarter coming up, especially tomorrow, <laughs> as it is, uh, what are you looking forward to in the campaign itself besides getting funded? And how are you promoting yourself? Uh, I'm, I'm looking more along the lines of creating new fans. Over the years, you, you sometimes you reach that crescendo of you can't go any further unless you try something different. And Kickstarter is a really good marketing tool uh, for reaching a, a larger audience. You never know who's going to get that email from Kickstarter saying, hey, check this out. Or they're going to happen upon a link in Kickstarter to say, hey, look at this. So, I mean, it's, it's more of a marketing tool for me because the books are all done. And what we're funding for is for printing and shipping of the books. So marketing is always going to be that little key element. And it's the one thing that as an indie creator, you have to be able to throw money at to, to get done. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? This is just going to keep going back to my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my granddad was a poet and he published a few poetry books. And like I said, that he... He was all about us educating ourselves, not just things that you learned in school, not just things you learned on the street. Where is that energy and that thought coming from? Anytime we could ever say anything near him, have any sense of we didn't understand where he wasn't going to try to educate us on what we were saying, what we were doing, and trying to put us on the right path to understand that we can use these books, we can use these words to and, and calculate everyone and get everyone involved in it. Do you have a, a favorite memory or story besides what you said about your grandfather? I would say that a lot of things that I write about came from stories my granddad would tell all the time, where I tell us stories about, so there was a situation where we were complaining about bringing groceries up the stairs. And he would tell us that, yeah, when I was your age, I carried eight bags of groceries on both arms and did flips. And we sit there and we, and we think about it. Is, he telling us, is, this, is this real? So it's just those things where it's it, it pushes forward and you say that, okay, so granddad's telling me the story. He's not telling me because it's true. He's telling me because he wants to motivate me and, and show me that even in talking about something that's probably not true, it can have a ring of, yeah, let's try that and see what happens. Uh, chiropractors got to you guys early, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Professionally, you are successful. Do you consider yourself personally successful? I say that, I mean, I, I always say this when people ask similar questions like that. And I say, I always use a percent. I say, I'm 40% there. Can't, I can't do comics full time. I uh, have to have a day job for to take care of all the necessities. So until I would say that I can do comics 100% of the time and not have to worry about having anything going on, I'm there. It's a goal. But it's not anything that I think is going to keep me from, from rolling on and keeping getting things done because, you know, people measure success in different ways. Can I fund one comic with another comic? I could do that. But to be able to just do it full time would be a, a, a big success for me for that. That would be, that would be the, the ultimate goal. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Uh, so we actually, I actually talked about this before where when I was originally writing uh, the first four issues. I had one of the characters go off on his own little journey for unknown reasons. I don't know why I did that. I pulled that story out, rewrote it, and then put it back more into focus. So instead of throwing that story out, I took it and I made it into its own one shot. 
So the story is going to happen in the same way it happened before. It's just going to happen in a way that's more organic and doesn't feel like it's sports. It doesn't feel like the guy is just abandoning his team in, in the middle of a fight to go off and do his own little thing. So I would say that take your, I mean, it's the lemons, lemonade thing. Like take a failure or like I said before, you get knocked down and you get up. You keep you knock down again, you keep getting up, dust yourself off and you keep trying because, I mean, you learn a lot from failure. Uh, you learn a lot because you're not going to fall the same way every time. So those failures can turn into successes if you learn from them. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's as a comic creator or a creative person or some way creative in some way, shape or form with maybe something completely different. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I think that we're, we're in a realm right now where not only from this generation, but any generation after, we have to put those books in people's hands. When I was at a, a free comic book day event at New Dimension Comics this past weekend, and I saw a lot of adults bringing children into the comic shop. We see a lot of my conventions. Like people keep telling me that it's, it's, it's manga, manga, manga. But I saw a lot of fresh eyes on comics uh, over the last couple of weekends that, that shows me that not only are you going to have new readers, you're going to have new creators. If you want someone to enjoy something, you have to show them that they can enjoy it, whether it be comics, books, manga, video games, anything. Put it in their hands and, and let them enjoy it and don't take it away from them because you didn't like it or someone else doesn't like them having it. It's an entertainment. Be entertained. That's where we're at with things. But we have to be able to create a new generation of not readers and creators. So these things don't die. Well, I do hate to say this, Marvin, but that ends this quick interview of Two Geeks Talking. I do want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where is this Kickstarter link and when does it end? Uh, the Kickstarter will end on June 7th, I think it was when it ends right after Three Worlds Comic Con. So you can find me on Kickstarter uh, at The Edge Comic, on Instagram at, at The Edge Comic, and on Twitter at Marvin Wynn because someone has at The Edge Comic on Twitter and they've never posted. I want to thank you for taking the time to be on this interview of Two Geeks Talking Rapid Fire. You can find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, twogeekstalking.com or tgtmedia.com and on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking.